Hey there, Earth Science people. This is part two of the Cause of Wind diagram, and man, the sequel, it's better than the original. Here we go. All right, you guys ready? We're going to go back to that lovely diagram we started, uh, the Cause of Wind, also known as the Cause of All Weather. Well, so far, we've only really talked about how unequal heating the Earth's surface causes wind, but let's talk about all the other aspects of weather that this causes, all right? So I got to ask you something, and this is important that you understand this concept. I know most of us instinctually understand this. All right. As air rises, what happens to its temperature? What's it like on the top of a mountain? It's cold up there, right? Doesn't matter what part of the world you're in. You can go to the equator, all right? The higher you go in elevation, the colder it gets, right? Um, warm air rises, but... As it rises, it cools in temperature. This is a type of temperature change called an adiabatic temperature change. Now, I'm never going to ask you to know that term on a test or anything else. But what it means is it's a temperature change without a change in the energy. Okay? Warm air rises, but as it rises, it becomes cooler. Why does it cool? Because there's less air up there. As air rises, the air pressure decreases. When you decrease pressure, you decrease temperature. Okay? If you've had chemistry and you guys studied the gas laws, you guys talked about Boyles and Charles, you talked about the ideal, um, all of those things are playing a role in this right here. When you change the pressure, you change the temperature adiabatically. Okay? So decrease pressure, decrease temperature. I have an, an, an easy trick for you to prove this, that it works every time. And I think we did this in class before we, uh, we left. Um, the trick is this. Take your hand, put it in front of your face, right? Act like you're going to check your breath. <sighs> when you do that, <sighs> you feel the warmth of your body because, frankly, folks, you're hot, right? Every one of us is roughly 100 degrees Fahrenheit, right? That's pretty hot. So when you do this, <sighs> you're feeling that warmth. But now what I want you to do is I want you to act like you're learning how to whistle for the first time. And I want you to pretend to try to whistle for the first time. But remember, you're clueless on how whistling actually works, right? So you're doing this. <sighs> do that. I'm going to wait a second. Now, if you did that, you feel <sighs> all of a sudden the air coming out of your mouth is cold. What happened? Did you just die all of a sudden and your body temperature is decreased? No. No you change the pressure of the air. When that air was coming out of your mouth like this, right? Your mouth right, and the force of your lungs was causing those air molecules to squeeze together to come out of the hole of your mouth. And when they come out, they rapidly expand. And when they rapidly expand, decrease pressure, decrease temperature, and it cools, all right? So as warm air rises, it gets colder. And that's what I'm going to add right here. I'm going to say as warm air rises, it cools. It cools because of a decrease in air pressure, an adiabatic temperature change. Decrease in air pressure, A, P, causes a decrease in temperature. Okay. Well, what happens to gases if they cool too much, especially water vapor? If you cool water enough, what happens? Well, you get the formation of a cloud. You get water vapor suddenly turning in to liquid water droplets, cloud droplets, right? So as air warm, as air as warm air rises, it cools. And what eventually happens to water is it condensates. Water condenses okay now that would happen to all the gases in the atmosphere if you could cool it enough but water is the only one that's anywhere close enough to being able to exist as a liquid and as a gas in the and the temperature of our atmosphere all the other gases like nitrogen and oxygen right you if you guys have ever experienced any liquid nitrogen maybe you went to the dermatologist liquid nitrogen is really 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 cold many 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 degrees below zero our atmosphere doesn't get that cold, so it's never going to turn into a liquid in our atmosphere. But water can't, okay? So on a weather map, if I were looking at this, 
if I see warm air rising, typically speaking on a weather map, you would see this is a gigantic red block L like this. And that L stands for low air pressure. Okay. Now, the low air pressure is really caused because warm air is less dense. And because that less dense air is rising, there's literally less air pressure pushing down on people underneath that low. So they feel less atmospheric pressure. We don't notice it necessarily. Some of us do in our joints and, and some of us do sometimes with various other ways, but uh, we don't typically understand when it's happening. But the point of the story is on a weather map, it would show up on, a, uh, on it as a giant L. And what that giant L can remind you of, whenever you see an L on a weather map and it's coming towards Michigan, well, that L is going to be associated with these clouds. So lows bring rain or snow. Sometimes in Michigan, it's rain and snow because that's how Michigan is. But we're going to go with rain or snow. Okay. So a low brings rain or snow. I want you to remember that rhyme, all right? Because if it rhymes, Dr. Seuss told me that must be true. Okay, so that's what happens to warm air as it rises. What happens to cold air as it sinks? This is a little bit harder to understand. For the same reason warm air as it rises, it gets cold. Cold air as it sinks, it gets warmer. And this is confusing because there's a couple different temperature changes going on here, okay? Cold air sinks because it's more dense. We established that in video part one. It's more dense and it's cold because the cool air is literally losing heat to the Earth's surface. This is a change in temperature with a ch change in energy. But what happens to this air is it goes from the top of the atmosphere where there's very little air up there. As it comes down, the air pressure actually increases. And when you increase pressure, you increase the temperature. Molecules are moving, or the molecules end up colliding with the, the whatever container is holding it in more frequently, and that increases air pressure. Short story is this as cold air sinks, as cold air sinks, it warms. Why does it warm? Because we're increasing air pressure, which causes an increase in temperature. There's two temperature changes going on on this side of the diagram, and they both seem to conflict with one another, all right? You have air here that is losing energy, causing it to be colder. Here, it's not losing energy or gaining energy, but what is changing is the air pressure, all right? So it's kind of a confusing thing to see this. On a weather map, this would be represented by a giant block H in blue. And that blue H stands for high air pressure. Lagadis. All right, and that's French. So you know it must be true. All right, so that giant capital H represents a high. And here's the really tricky part. If you increase the pressure of the air, you warm the air. Can water go from a gas to a liquid if you warm it up? And the answer is no. You cannot make water condensate if you're warming it up. You need to decrease the temperature to make water condensate. Point of the story is, as air sinks, water cannot condensate. It stays a gas. As a result, we have lots of sunshine on these days. And there's a little phrase we can say here. Look at that sunshine. It's gorgeous. Man, there's some sunshine outside right now. It's kind of hard to see. Anyways, if you have a high air pressure coming towards Michigan, you have a fun little phrase here. It's called highs bring clear skies. Highs bring clear skies. Lows bring rain or snow. So when I say the cause of wind diagram is the explanation for all weather, I quite literally mean it, okay? Any clear day can be explained by the right side of this diagram. Any rain, any form of rain, could be thunderstorms, could be light rain, could be a tornado, could be a hurricane, are explained by the left side of this diagram. 
I mean, frankly, what is a tornado? It is a really, really, really strong, isolated, low air pressure where the air is rising really, really fast. That is a tornado, and the same thing as a hurricane. Alrighty, folks, cause of wind, which is actually the cause of all weather. Thank you for listening. Appreciate it. I'm going to pretend like I was ready to stop recording for just a moment before I do my, my pause, my dramatic pause. Here goes a dramatic pause. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you next time.